30. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the finance committee meeting, uh, September 8th. And uh, we have today um, for our finance committee, myself, Amy Biden, David Phil, and Andy Kopacki. Um, Paul Benjamin and Dylan uh, Barstow Mans is unable to attend tonight. So it's just going to be the three of us. Okay, so on the agenda, what we have is um, uh, what we want to talk about is both the sewer and the Hadley media. We have funds transfers, um, and I figured I don't know who wants to go first or if you want to explain why we need them and the whole uh, gist of it. Amy, if you're okay, can Alex go first? Because uh, we'll have a lot more discussion with Scott. Absolutely. And uh, welcome, Alex. Um, it's it's nice to meet you. First time I've, I've seen you. Absolutely. Nice to meet you. And thank you for taking time to meet today. Um, so we I have a few things I need to take care of for the finance committee and dipping into the um, reserve fund uh, to make sure some things are buttoned up here. Um, uh, first and foremost, it's the cable cast invoice. Um, uh, the, from what I understand, um, I'm going to talk on the cable cast. These updates have already been implemented uh, for the year, and the invoice has not been paid. Uh, I'm going to try to contact um, Cablecast to try to see if they can change the invoice date um, from last fiscal year to sometime in this fiscal year so we can get them paid um, and not cause any issues to them moving forward. Um, so I'm asking for $1,600 to come from reserve to go into the software line to take care of that invoice with the condition that I take care of um, um, making sure that I get an invoice uh, for this fiscal year to try to avoid going to town meeting with it. When is the period what, what, that it covers? What's the invoice again? I'm sorry. What What was the the... I, yeah, so it's from Cablecast. They're the they're the folks who um, uh, who uh made the uh, server that we have that we broadcast the channels one ninety one and one ninety two, and they um install software updates from time to time. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, another one. I need some cameras repaired. Um. I'm not sure if everyone's in gallery mode or speaker mode. Um, I'm actually going to show you what I'm talking about for the cameras. Um, first camera I'm going to talk about um, is this camera. Um, from what I understand, someone dropped it. And mean, that means that I cannot put in or take out any SD cards in the camera. So in this slot, it's actually an SD card stuck in there. Um, and arguably, this is probably the, the most important part of the, the camera ever because um, you got to record on something. Um, whereas on this camera, I could just take um, out the, uh, the SD card like so and then put it back in. I have no issue. And it will record on the SD card. Um, the problem with this camera is that when I do this, the door or the viewfinder does this. Um, or if I'm trying to move it, it's loose, whereas it really should be doing this and not, and I, be, I should be able to move it where I want with no problem. Okay. So that's the case of these two cameras. Um, I know when I sent the last camera out, it was around 240 and then we had to pay around $40 to ship it out to California. Um, let's see here. Um, membership dues twenty five dollars. Um, into that. Um, uh, we're part of. We're now part of two um trade organizations. Um, Mass Access and the Alliance for Community Media. Mass Access um focuses on Massachusetts, and the Alliance for Community Media focuses on more of the federal part of what's going on in uh cable uh community media. Sorry, uh, Peg. Um, and supplies, um, I am going through the supplies line um, from things like SD cards. I'd buy some SD cards of that. 
I bought a couple of charger adapters of those and some other other basic supplies like um, printer ink cartridges and um, business cards. Um, I am running short, um, working on getting apparel for, as you know, we've been out and about in town and especially the mall. So um, something with something our um, logo on it would probably um, be more sufficient and not not looking like we're going out um, as a just a regular normal person with a camera that can be suspicious to some people. Um, and plus, it's very really good for brand management and uh, marketing um, and some other marketing things such as a cable throw. Um, with this position not being filled for the production assistant, I may have to go out. Or at least try to attempt to um, go out to um, area colleges and try to table over over those colleges to see um, how see if I can get any interest um, in person instead of online. I went through a lot. Um, do you have any questions? What's the balance in the uh, how the media reserves? The reserves is five thousand dollars, and that's something that um, we want to talk with in context of two. Both of these, um, these reserve fund transfers that they asked for from the enterprise funds are, are from the reserve lines that they have in uh, within their budgets. It's not out of the amount that the finance committee's reserve fund, which is 100,000. That's just for the general fund. So we probably, in both cases, we probably should look again at, at how we're funding these reserve funds because they're coming out of the, the enterprise fund's own reserves and they should be able to access it we're probably cutting them a little short and especially alex coming into a budget that he didn't prepare and finding a lot of issues with the equipment that he wants to change out fix, and improve um uh so he yeah he's he's been a, a bit stuck did you mention the um uh, alex the 3662 or so um that will be coming out of another line for that for that audio for the audio stuff that will be from what i understand um from talking with uh jane nevins that will be coming out of another line it, within the operational budget or another um i i was told not to tell you but i'm gonna tell you anyways i believe they they're taking it out of the building budget no mm. and that's for what that's for it's for um, it, uh, the audio system for uh, select board meetings and other meetings that happen at the uh, senior center. So there, there was some discussion because I think there was discussions, and maybe I'm wrong about uh, because that is the meeting room, uh, that's the meeting space for the select board. That there was discussion that that would be a part of the building project. But I'm just going back on some older discussions that there was a plan in place to put that to, to make it more user friendly. So that may be what she's referring to. I'm not sure. Okay. But for now we're just doing the 1600 for the timers yeah. and the clothing and the clothing. Yeah, I, yeah. You're, I thought they the were total would, higher. Hmm. So the total would I would need would be a 16 plus 600. I believe would be twenty seven hundred twenty five. Amy, is it okay if I ask a question just for some clarification? Sorry, sorry, I didn't. Sorry. We didn't have a chance to talk before the meeting about the reserve fund transfers. You you referred back to a from Comcast something that took place in two thousand twenty one and was so. Um, My concern is, um, Amy and Alex, is just if it's an old, uh, if that's an old invoice that the, the the scope of work was completed, but we didn't get the invoice until now, that would be something we would have to encumber. That's why I just need clarification. If I, I, I might have misunderstood you. Right. So um, I believe I'm not I think I brought this to your attention, Carolyn. Um, in Linda's office when you came back from vacation about the um, it, it was that part of that conversation that we had on uh, the cable cast invoice um, it was from last fiscal year um, the invoice was dated um, 
sometime in June of 2022. Um, and, uh, sorry. Um, and, uh, and, and from what I understand though, when I talked to Cablecast, those were already implemented. They just need their money. And I'm not sure. I'm not because I, this is my fourth week. So I'm not hundred percent of whether or not that was sent last fiscal right. year or if it was just sent a couple months ago, but I'm assuming that it was sent last fiscal year. I don't, if I were someone in business, I'd want to send my invoices out immediately. Yeah. Is there going to be the same bill for this year then? Is that an annual fee? I believe so. And as I said in the email to finance and Linda here, um, my assumption was it was coming out of capital when it's really a software um, it should it should have been software to begin with, and not a capital purchase, because I could not find any anything that had to do with cable casts in the software um, budget from last fiscal year, unless there's something from the fiscal year previous. I I don't know of. So I, I think we just need clarification if if the purchase I'm calling it a purchase. If the purchase right. and implementation took place in, two, in, in fiscal year 2021 or 2022, 20, yeah, 22, right? We would have to we'd have to put that on special town meeting. Okay. Yeah, it's not just a matter of changing the uh, invoice date. If the service date was fully in last year, now if the service date began in last fiscal year and goes through into this year, that's that's a different that's different altogether. So I don't know when their I don't know when their service year is. So let that would make let, me get, let me get the email up just to. because someone's supposed to contact me this week, but we all know what happens when the Tuesday back from. A yeah. holiday. Yeah. yeah, I'm still recuperating. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't caught up yet. So, Alex, what's the amount without that invoice that you're looking for? I'll do that where you're looking, Alex. It looks like it's 600, okay. for, 600 for camera 600. repairs, plus 25 for dues, plus 500 for uh, other uh, maintenance of other camera. That's uh, one thousand one hundred and twenty-five. And there was with, with the sixteen hundred is two thousand seven hundred and twenty-five. And yeah, and I thought we were yeah. doing that three six six two, which was going to pull over and get you the whole five thousand. And then, what about the clothing that you were talking about, like the uniforms for Hadley Media? How much was that going to run? Um, I believe we're looking at around. 100, 150 something, 120. Hold on. My apologies. I should have really gotten you those numbers. Um, so, this software update, um, it's from NAMP for it's um, so, you guys. So, this, um, so this, uh, what is it? So for the cable cast, it's called um, software assurance. The software assurance renewal means I'm eligible for any major cable cast software updates between now and um, June 1st of 2023. Um, it looks like we're on the latest version of the software. So we're all set at this time. Um, but I still think we need to pay that um, invoice. So the, I guess we have to look at the date um, to see when that software took update happened or the renewal. What, what was the official renewal date? Do you have a copy of the invoice right in there, too? Maybe I do. I'm assuming it's a one year one year thing, so it probably started in June of 2022. Somewhere. Nope. No. Is that it? That's not it. Well, maybe it wasn't a tightrope. 
Yep, that was probably under Tightrope. Very the same company. There we go. So invoice was dated um, May 4th of 2022, and it was due June 3rd, 22. Yeah, that's no problem. That should go on special town meeting. Okay. Yeah. All right. I did. I did. I'll, I'll, I will alert them to uh, make sure that they are aware of that. That's great. Great. So we're at 11.25 um, for the cameras. And then what was the clothing amount? So that was just, um, so I just put down $500 for uh, supplies. And that's included in there? Yeah. Okay. So just so I'm okay. clear, the 1125 includes that 500 or no? Correct. It does. Okay. Okay. So Alex, all of the other invoices that you had come in with at some point, and we were looking at their capital articles, they, they are staying, they fit within what your balance is for the cap, uh, from the capital articles? You're, you're covered? I believe so. Okay. All right. Okay. I thought you were more short than this, but that's... Um, this. Okay. Yeah. No, these are the only things I need to worry about at the moment. Okay. Okay. So if we do a transfer from the Hadley Media uh, Reserves for $1,125, that would work for you. Correct? Correct. Wonderful. So do we have a motion to do the transfer from the Reserves to Hadley Media? So moved. And a second? Second. All right. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much for your time to take care, um, to help me uh, get this all situated. Um, Linda, I'll, I'll stop by your office tomorrow to, because I'm a newbie, and uh, <laughs> to uh, try to figure some of this stuff out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, actually, I'll send you e an email. I've got a few things uh, scheduled for tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll send you an email. But when yeah, I'm perfect. That's, that's even better. If yeah. you haven't seen what um, Alex has been doing, it's 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 really been great. He's been out in the community, making a big difference. And um, so, I just want you guys to know, I, he's anything he's asking for, he's using it for for really good purposes. He's doing a great job. Doing a great job. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of positive comments from people about streaming meetings, select board meetings, things like that, where people can't watch it on their yeah, network, they have cable, so they can't watch it on public access oh, and yeah. things like that. So it, keep it up. Are you going to be Thank doing you. the school, um, uh, the games, any of the games? So not tonight's games because you can't, unfortunately, we can't clone me. Uh, they have two soccer games going on at once. So um, we're gonna we're slated for next week. Nice. Good. And these cameras are available if there's a parent who's able to help out and sort of not, not exactly cloning you, but if someone is willing, a parent is willing to be trained on cameras. Is there something available so they could be doing the games? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's something I would have to um, talk with the booster club about because they probably know um, the parents better than me. So, um, and when I was in Grand Blue, we had an incredible relationship with the uh, sports community and the um, Booster Club community. In fact, they're all very sad it left. So, um, um, watch out for some great things coming up. Uh, a suggestion, too, is, um, so the Booster Club, they're still there, but sometimes, you know, it, um, we don't have as many of the volunteers as we used to. So, um, but... Uh, Amy Jennings is the new uh, Fisk, or um, the new um, athletic director this year oh, over at the school. Um, so she seems to be um, uh, going full force. So maybe she's a good person to talk to. The other thing is the Key Club has been doing quite a bit over at Hopkins Academy. So they're doing a lot of volunteerism. So maybe someone there, you know, the students too, would be great to... Um, maybe that's something they might get into. Maybe um, it's something we can start looking at 
Um, the police did a great thing one time, or not with the police, the fire, where they needed volunteers. So they started a whole program with Hopkins and they do in, like an internship almost. So they learn how to do the firework and everything. And it was a great program that Chief Spank Naval set up. And uh, so I, I'm just thinking down the road, maybe Hadley Media, Media could use some of these kids. Yeah, totally. Um, one of the goals, one of my goals of Granby, in fact, we were trying to implement this as I was leaving, was the internship program with uh, Granby Cable and uh, or Granby Media and uh, and the Granby School. So um, that's already top of mind. Um, so um, if no nothing, nothing will help you this year, obviously. We're going to try for next year, um, mm -hmm. see what happens, see what the interest is, um, and all that fun stuff. So. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for, thank you for taking the time. Thank nice you. you. Okay, next up, Mr. McCarthy. Are you ready? <laughs> good evening. All right, we have your your transfer ready to go. Let's. You want to tell us all about it? Uh, no. I I I'll refer to uh, Carolyn. How's that? <laughs> You're muted. Carolyn, you're muted. Okay. So um, I, I, I can, but I think I'll, I'll give well, this to Carolyn. I, I think what I, what I will just, I'll give you a little bit. I'll, as I use the term with Linda today, I want to tee this up for a discussion. So with this, we had originally talked about possibly doing a, a, a reserve fund transfer for this. Um, I'm going to let Scott explain the situation but I, I don't think at this point we're going to ask for a reserve fund transfer. Um, this was a capital funded project, an article. And um, so I think uh, this is something that you're going to see a lot. And as we move forward with the uh, opening up the budget cycle and capital requests is quotes are coming in significantly higher than we um, anticipated or had previously gotten quotes for. And it's a really, it's an unknown territory out there, but um, we're finding with our procurements and not just in Hadley, but everywhere, that threshold has gotten raised so much um, simply because of the supply and chain and the prices are doubling like within months. So this is this is um, a situation that's coming up. So uh, I'll let Scott explain the process, the, the project, but this is something that we're probably going to um, go back to town meeting to get the full funding for. So, so, so when we last, year we we're working on an article for sewer station roof replacement. Uh, we, Gary and I solicited a quote from uh, our local uh, roof vendor that's done, you know, metal roofs for us and other buildings. And he came out and gave us, you know, an estimate for budgetary reasons. Uh, I believe it was, 68,000. And when, when I asked for the article, I said, uh, we'll push it to 75. It'll give us a little bit of cushion. But come to find out when we obtain this quote, uh, there obviously there has been some inflation, but the biggest problem, the contractor did not quote us with prevailing wage. So the, uh, the bids came in about $25,000 higher than what we budgeted for because of that oversight. So we are, you know, about $25,000 short on doing this project. So it's about a hundred thousand to do the pumping station. Yes. Pretty close. Yeah. And so you, they have the bids, you have the bids and yep. One reason we wanted to go through and find some other financing, we had suggested to Scott initially, let's just spend it out of the budget and we'll have, uh, we'll get it replenished at special town meeting. But the account was kind of uncomfortable with that level of money. It's not it's that, that spending 25,000 might be pushing the uh, boundaries a little bit too much. And I was concerned that we put some money on at special town meeting and then you go out to bid again and they come in even higher. But, Carolyn found we can actually hold the bids, hold with the, with the agreement of the contractors. Mm -hmm. 
how how long? Like six, sixty days from when the bids were open, or seventy five? So their agreement? you it's sixty to ninety days, but you can go up to you can extend that as long as the contractor agrees. Right. So that so we've got yeah. we have time that we didn't think we had when we initially uh, contacted you last week, Amy. Um, there is. Um, there is a second uh, second project, Scott, that you had mentioned, the Mission Communications, that is coming in 7,000. That actually could fit within your the 10,000 reserves if you wanted to propose that for coming out yeah. of reserves. Yeah, so another article that I asked for was doing some communication upgrades in uh, some pump stations. Uh, that work is coming in way over budget uh, just to, due to uh, electronic parts with the whole COVID problems, et cetera. So the contractor, we've been working with on this. We, we looked at it a little closer and we moved our scope of work to mainly two pump stations, the two that are in the biggest need of repairs at the moment. And we got appropriated thirty thousand dollars, and he came in at thirty six thousand eight seventy five. So we're in almost seven thousand over budget. Can you explain that project and, and how important that project is? Well, it's just uh, the main pump station just has a lot of antiquated controls and stuff in there, and uh, calling back to our our station. Uh, when there's a problem, we were just looking to do some upgrades there. Uh, that that project there was 17650 And unfortunately, the pump station at Venture Way, it's, it's the least amount that's pumped. That's the pump station that runs the most or the least, but it has the most problems that need to be upgraded. And that came in at 19,182. So we, we're just trying to figure out where we get the most uh, productivity, I guess, out of our money, the 30,000. And uh, it, it's just, it's crazy. Everything we look at just is coming in way over budget. Uh, I guess just the, in the times that we are, and I just, this mission, this, mission, this mission project, we were looking to do a lot more and just we're pricing ourselves right out of the uh, business here. It's, it's just becoming so expensive. So that kind of brings us to generally the issue being every time we, if, if the town goes to, you go to town meeting and you vote, capital money for for a project and then they go out to bid and the project comes in higher do we wait for the next town meeting to make to get more money and then it's almost how do you keep up with it uh and then we go out to bid and what if we come up short then so i was kind of talking with amy last week about how you know how we can generally um how we can do this and we don't want to rely on the operational budget to supplement but if we um we historically, we've really, in that reserve portion of the budget that uh, is voted every year, the reserve fund, um, the enterprise version of the reserve fund, um, maybe we should consider, and I think that we would do for this for the fall town meeting, increasing that in the budget so that we could start picking up some of these um, shortfalls so the projects can keep can get done, that we can move forward. Now they're not going to be under the same terms when we vote it at um, at town meeting. If we vote 75,000 for those roofs for, um, well, let me go to the mission one. We vote 30,000 for the mission and that's that's to be borrowed and paid um, paid on an annual basis to pay back down our borrowing. But if he has, if he takes the 7,000 out of the reserves that we're just paying it straight out of reserves, which is, which is, um, Okay, but um, we don't necessarily want to do that with twenty five thousand dollars. It starts to, especially the sewer uh, but reserves, which are not as high as the water reserves. But um, 
if the idea is to get more, get these once they're voted and then we know the town wants it and then we know the sewer needs it, we have to get the projects done. So we're kind of putting it out to finance committee for some help in how we address these uh, stumbling blocks. So, okay. oh, I was gonna say when we do a property such as um, the library or the senior center or any of those, we had that, um, that buffer in there, correct? So this is how much the project's gonna cost, but they had that contingency, they had that little bit of a buffer if you went over. Um, so I, this, I was hoping we can do something at a smaller level. Within the articles, just from going forward, you want uh, a bit of a, a the buffer to be in the article or we want the buffer uh, reserves to pull into the budget? Which way, Amy? Well, I don't want it to be that, it, you know, it, it is difficult when, it, when it's in the article. The, the thing is, people might think, oh, I can spend all that. Well, we don't want that. Yeah. But at the same time, I want to make it as easy, however we can do it, or as easy as it can be. But you don't want to keep going back. And you do have those unexpected all the time. It happens constantly. It's happening, too, right now with CPA. And they're having the same problem with the fence at Hockenham. Um, so all of our articles seem that you need to have, and some of them come back lower. But they're all, all we do is get estimates, right? It's an S it, it, when we get those, it's an right. estimate at that time. It's not an exact people when they go to do the, the, whatever it's a repair or whatever they go to do, they find something else. I, I mean, things happen. David, what did you want to add to? Well, you know, in capital last year, we had, we're talking about a capital stabilization fund, something that we could build over time. Um, is it possible to have a, capital reserve fund, so to speak, where we could set aside something like that, because these are all capital projects that tend to run over. And then, and, and another way to fund it would be, uh, I don't know if this, I don't know how you do this as far as the attorneys, but um, word the articles so that any excess funds would be returned automatically to the capital reserves or something along those lines. So we wouldn't have to vote on that each year. And then it would sometimes replenish itself, you know, when we happen to go under, which sometimes happens, not often, but it does. And then, you know, as we could keep a little bit of balance in there. So that way when things come up, but I don't know if that's, I don't know how you'd work all the details. You'd want it so that, I mean, it, let's say we put it into a capital stabilization fund, they still couldn't access it in between town meetings because the voters would have to vote to spend out of the capital. But if you get it into a reserve that's just in the budget that is within the finance committee control, then you could spend it in between by just by a meeting like this. And so I think that's what we have to really um, look for is a way to get it so that it is available between meetings to, to carry through. But I, I like, I like that. I, I like that concept that this, the overage, let's say, he was spending one of his uh, sewer projects and he had extra $5,000 and, and it was designated uh, with permission to go right into a reserve fund. Then you would have that extra money to spend now, perhaps right. if it could follow through the way you're suggesting, David, that's what you're suggesting. Right. Okay. I, I just uh, yeah, is it possible? <laughs> yeah. That's a good I'll, idea. I'll ask the attorney. I'll ask the attorney. Okay. But that would have to be worded in within each of the articles going forward but i, I really like it. it it might clean up uh special town meet, or every town meeting when we do these budget cleanup items too where we have to vote on returning money you know maybe we do it by separate vote yeah at that time yep that's that's probably a better way to do it because even though the first round you'd have to wait a little bit longer for the money Going forward, uh, you'd start having some in there. You'd you'd have yeah. Once we, once it gets built up, it gets easier and easier to use it. I would hope. So what are so what are we saying? We're gonna put it in the the finance bucket, or did you? Uh, I, I David said the capital reserve, but then we couldn't use it. I'm confused of what where we are. I, I was kind of thinking capital reserve, just because I would hate to see. Uh, voters vote on a capital project and then it go just into finance reserves and then we spend it on something else that they weren't intending it on versus right. if we could 
designate it that it's just a capital reserve fund, whether it falls under capital committee or the finance committee, at least people would know that, hey, they're not, we're not going to be spending this on mowing lawns or something like that when, right. when they thought we were building something out of it. Oh, yeah. so are you, so did you, so if I'm not, I just want to make sure I understand. So are we saying like, it would be this, it would be another finance committee, um, capital reserve. So that way it doesn't have to go to town meeting. It can go to, it's just earmarked for capital. It's just, a, it's just a capital. It's just a finance reserve, but earmarked for capital. So maybe there's two finance reserve accounts. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fine. As long as it's in my mind, it would have to be earmarked for capital specifically right. separate from everything. So. But um, you could, you could use the reserve that's already there. Let's say you wanted to make it capital and you end up, the thing is, this is part of a budget, the capital portion of the budget, and it will expire at the end of each year. So it's that, um, I mean, then that can be the finance committee's, your policy for use of those funds. So rather than, let's say, um, when he has shortfalls, well, we're going to just put an extra 50000 in your operational budget so that you've got room to cover things um, at, when you have these shortfalls. But then once it's in the operational budget, it can really be used for anything. And we also lose track of what the operational costs of that department are, well, we, which is important for us to know. What does it cost to run that department? Well, we've got an extra 50, 100,000 in there, so we don't really know. But if you take that 50,000 and you put that in that reserve line, which we now carry at 10, but let's say you carried it even as 50, but maybe something less, um, then then you, at least finance committee, that's a second stop. It's not going to get lost in expenses. Um, it will be for, uh, for capital uh, and, you, and, and, and you're the ones making that decision as to whether um, when Scott comes to you for a request, you're the ones making the decision as to whether you want to fund it or not. So I, I don't think that you need another. Well, I don't think, bucket. see, this is where I think is, I don't think we need to just put it into the regular reserves, the finance reserves, because at the end of the year, it just goes back to the free cash, right? And I get that, yeah. but here's the problem. And I've seen this with the CPA because CPA will say, okay, at the end of two years, it will come back if it's not used. Okay, CPA articles say that in the, in the warrant articles. But I, a ton of those projects take more than two years or go all the way up to the two years. So if here we are doing something, it's, it'll get swept, swept up before you get a chance to need it. I think it, it, might, it might be swept up too early. With free well, cash. Perhaps if we're using a mechanism to get at the money, then um, then we won't have quite these delays that are that have been part and parcel with some of the CPA projects. If they come over, you got to go back to town meeting. I mean, I think mm -hmm. the whole purpose of this um, this mechanism would be to cut down on the response time to deal with these overages. That uh, that are mm -hmm. unforeseen. I mean, we we saw that in the building committee. We've seen that in CPA. And when you got to go back and wait for another town meeting to vote on it, uh, you know, it could be uh, half a year later before you get back at it. And right. uh, you know, and, and even that, you know, a lot of things will change in the, the 180 days. So if this mechanism is more responsive, I mean, I do like the uh, capital uh, aspect of it. Um, you know, I guess my question would be. Uh, how is that money, uh, you know, repurposed? I mean, who who is the approving body? And you know, pardon my my lack of knowledge there, but you know, how if, if Scott was to come back and say, yeah, I need another ten thousand um, uh, dollars, how would that be? How would that be released uh, through the committee vote? Is there oversight over through that? this kind of a meeting? Yeah, it's, it would be finance yeah. committee. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And and, and so yeah so. So it's, it's a balancing you have the two. If you want it accessible, it's also going to go away at the end of the year. I mean, this, or if you want to put it into a capital account that will stay, then you're going to have to wait for town meeting to allocate it. So a sum of each, perhaps, maybe we, we should be looking in both directions. Yeah, I just, it, so there's no mechanism, I guess. Uh, I mean, you can't really, a revolving fund of some sort. Is there one that would work for that, that we could access between Town, annual town meeting and special town meeting, or would that have to? 
No, well, it, that's even that's even harder. A, a revolving fund is specific to a department need. A, so you're taking in money specifically for a specific purchase or service. Okay, it'd be a little little bit harder with that. I, I think I should throw it out to the attorney. I, I think I should give those two scenarios and concerns. Because I think that one of the concerns is an article is written specifically for a specific project. Um, so, but I think I think it's worth throwing it out there. I, and maybe there's some best practices that are done in other communities to help that that we just don't know about. I think it's worth certainly the attorneys will be exposed to questions like that. Uh, here's That's a question. A question okay. on uh, um, the if it's CPA money. So say we wanted to do this for CPA too, because they're having the same problem with the articles, but that's CPA money, which is completely different than the other money. And could we even do that, commingle the CPA money with the general money, which I don't think we may not be able to. Mm. Yeah, that's its, that's its own fund. <laughs> Well, it's, it's worth asking about if we're already, if we're delving into it, I'm sure yep. uh, CPA, you know, they're, they're both subject to the same market changes. So having a, um, you know, a more responsive uh, protocol in place would be definitely worthwhile uh, looking into. Right. Because it, it's its own fund. And so if you're looking for these kinds of uh, ways to handle it, unlike the general fund where you just create a pool, you're really needing something for water, then you need a separate one for sewer, you need a separate one for Hadley Media. Now you're talking about a separate one for CPA, um, which is if which is fine if we cannot find an easier way to go. So um, what, I've, just, we've never run in, I've never run into it. See, I've never seen it like this happening before. This is, is, there any, is there any way, Linda, that we can have it so that the reserve is doesn't get swept up into free cash that we can keep it instead of having it go to free cash? Because there's other reserves such as sewer reserves, Hadley Media reserves. There's all right. these other reserves that don't go to free cash. Yeah, I think that we're, we're using the words when we say the sewer reserves and the free cash or the, I mean, it's their it's their sewer. There's a I, there's actually a better word for it. the reserves in the context. We're using this within the budget are just like, are the ones that are actually in the budget. Those are the reserves that have been designated. It can be used during the year and they're in reserve for budget or other uses of those, um, for those uh, departments or those funds. The sewer and water reserves we're talking about that are like two to $500,000. That's, that's the enterprise funds equivalent of the general fund free cash, um, which, um, so, and we shouldn't really probably be calling it reserves. It's a, it's a different, it's a different thing altogether. It's our, uh, someone's called it retained earnings or something. I, it's, it's like that. It's their retained, just like our free cash isn't really. Fun. So we, maybe we need to come up with new language, but um, it's, okay. it's not that kind of reserves. <laughs> so and Amy, we'll work on that. You, when, you, when you were talking about quotes and stuff, I don't see this getting any better anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just like this special town meeting request, you know, Carolyn, you know, I give her the information, you know, July 31st was my deadline or mm -hmm. I'm sorry, August 31st. Uh, so by the time it goes through every board and the meeting and whatever yep. in today's day and age, those are old quotes. So yep. that's another problem we are anticipating and i have a question too uh like if we had a reserve money for doing capital uh projects could you use that money to to have help creating a scope of work that's another problem that uh i'm having and i don't know what you what you guys heard from carolyn or not but just projects in general are just uh like our in-house design and things of that nature are, a lot of times aren't good enough for people to give us accurate estimates on. Another problem is uh, an, another article was the propane tanks at the water plant to try to put in new propane tanks that we own and et cetera. And I'm probably going to have to give that money back to Linda and go back to town meeting for a no, whole nother article. Uh, the project has just 
spiraled totally out of control because we were going by contractor suggestions, I guess. First, it was, okay, yeah, you can put the propane tanks over here, no problem, this and that. Well, when we do that, uh, it becomes too close to the building. So now we can't get a permit from the fire department because we're in violation. So now the propane tanks have to be moved to another location and on the property. We have to build a retaining wall and a concrete slab for them to be anchored on. And it just sometimes I'm finding that we need a little bit of professionalism somewhere for like real scopes of work other than estimates from your local contractor, which sometimes it works, but the last few times it has not. Mm. When we're looking to do a project, I want to come to you like the design phase or somewhat some kind of documentation of what we need to go to, to do even to get started is becoming a problem. Yeah. Mm. What, it, it it wasn't, uh, wasn't there a mechanism in the building committee uh, budget uh, a few years back, $50,000 a year for a consultant, and that was replenished? Um, I don't know if that's still uh, mm. active, but there was a, that was for building, building designs. There's $50,000 set aside annually. And if that money was spent, it was uh, up for replenishment uh, the next town at the at the town meeting, annual town meeting. So I don't know if there is if it's building projects or if you're looking at all projects, and if that was um, you know something to consider that there's a precedent there. Yeah, I don't like I said some some of the times we can figure it out in house and come up with an accurate scope of work and etc. But lately, it just seems like we're really failing on it. And yeah. anything we try to do in house is just never right. Uh, there's a lot of documentation missing in our presentations. And when we go out to bid, well, you know, the contractors are coming back with, well, what about this? What about that? What about that? And uh, first of all, we don't have the answers. And secondly, when all this happens, where we become really over budget because we, right. we haven't anticipated all these problems. It, it's a lot easier to get the, a, a quote for a truck than it is for a project. So it's, it, is right. a lot, it is more complicated. And, um, and it's very, you know, that it, it's just, um, I, we can, we can see it. We experience it. The a frustration of going through the entire process, going to town meeting, getting the money, going out to bid, and then boom, you don't, it's, it's not right. They come, the, like you say, the contractors come back and say, what about this? What about that? And then adding the money on and you can't even do it that way anyways. And all that effort that went in to, to do the project is now, now you have to start over. And yeah, we that's really, not a great use of your time or, or any of the rest of us trying to help pick up the pieces and, and get it back on track. So yeah, I spent a lot of, a lot of time on some of these projects along with you know, Gary or the water guys or whoever, the sewer guys trying to figure things out and to come up short is really heartbreaking. We're really trying to do the right thing, make some good improvements, uh, et cetera. And just, we're really striking out just because of, uh, I don't know if you want to call it lack of planning, but it, it seems that like on the, on the big end, when, when, you know, we can say we want to do X, Y, or Z and write it on a piece of paper, but when it goes out for procurement and et cetera, it just, just comes back not correct. We're not, we're not uh, architects or engineers or whatever. And it's, like I said, it, it's frustrating when you're trying to do all this work and you, you come up short. There, there's no question. We put all these hours into this and you know, hey, oh yeah, now we can't do it. Okay, so. Mm. So Scott, I just want to, you know, I, I don't want you to put your your skills or anybody else's there that you guys don't have the skill. Some of it is stuff that we wouldn't know unless we were engin engineers. And an example of that is the painting the water tanks. You think it's just painting water tanks. Um, and we borrowed, or we didn't borrow, but the article, was for $310,000 for that. Um, and then 
we find out, and that's because Scott did some due diligence. Um, it's way more than that. You have to have an, a, a significant engineering. I think what didn't he say it was? I think it was over fifty thousand just for the engineering to paint those tanks because there's you have to pre-test them. You have to have special paint. You have to do stuff inside uh, the tanks. So it's it's gotten so huge that I had to write to our attorney to say, can we change the scope of work of that article to do the pre-testing and the preliminary engineering work for it? And that's all that's gonna cover. So, so a lot of it is we don't have an in-house engineer. We don't have an in-house architect. Bigger cities and communities do, we don't have that. So um, we, are, we just don't have enough funding to, to pay these uh, for the design or engineering or the architect fees. And that was another job where we just reached out to a, a vendor that specializes in, you know, uh, painting water tanks and, you know, said, Hey, we want to paint these water tanks. Uh, you know, how much? Okay. Yeah. Well, no problem. Uh, yeah. I need to pressure wash the tank, et cetera, prime it and paint it. And, you know, it for the both tanks, it's 300 and whatever thousand dollars. Okay. Well, in the grand scheme of things, that's not even remotely close uh, because there's a lot of uh, things that aren't talked to or, you know, that weren't looked at uh, the paint. Is there any lead paint from previous paintings on there? The paint needs to be tested. Any kind of sealants around any hatch or anything need to be tested for lead. Uh, the tanks need to be inspected first from a third party on the outside to get a recommendation of, or fly it with a drone actually and really look at it close and see what happened. Uh, so originally we thought you could paint it in the fall with tanks full of water. Well, we're wrong on that. The condensation and the, any kind of sweating, it's going to screw it up. Well, the tanks have to be drained and be taken offline. We're not even sure if we can do that with one of the tanks and we might need to bring in a pressure vessel to keep the pressure up while this is being done. Uh, Myself and Tony and Billy, we tried doing our best to figure this out. And once again, uh, once it went through procurement and, you know, a lot of time, I, I'm not, I'm assuming this, this takes a lot of time for Jennifer to, you know, put these bids together and the documents and put them out to bid. But when it goes out to bid and, you know, where, uh, where's your, you know, spec on how thick you want the paint? Where's your spec on what kind of paint? Where's your spec on this? Where's your spec on that? Just, we, we totally, totally wasted our time. Uh, if we painted those tanks or what we're proposing, I guess you could get it right now. We don't have any paint or whatever. You could get like a, your local uh, house painter to give us a bid and they would paint it with whatever kind of paint they wanted. We'd have to pay them and uh, we'd be really, really going backwards. Because, you know, there, there's a lot of specifics to it. I think Andy had a good, the good suggestion that we have an article for a consultant. Yeah, this, this, is, this is a, you know, a, a big conceptual problem here. And, and I, and I, um, uh, I certainly we want to come back to that $10,000, which is what we're, we're talking about here for that, um, you know, for the, the, the roofs there on the pump stations. Um, so, I mean, I think that, you know, Scott, you can cite, a, I'm sure you can cite many examples as, as CPA can, as, as uh, you know, the building committee can of, uh, you know, certain uh, deficiencies in, in project scope. And, um, you know, that there, I think the, the building committee's method of dealing with it was is certainly an interim measure while you look down at a, a longer term solution. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know if we're going to be able to resolve that tonight, uh, trying to, it's certainly something to think about and, you know, how can we creatively, uh, come back to that? So, um, I think we're really, you know, if we're still trying to steer back onto the $10,000 for the roofs, um, you know, uh, that, that budget shortfall, that's kind of what, what I had set aside for time tonight, but, uh, I think that the, the larger issue is, is there and we should, we should talk more about it and try to figure out a way to deal with it. 
So I think, you know, if, if Carolyn was going to talk to the, the lawyer uh, uh, run it by the legal team, uh, certainly with Linda's input, what would be a good mechanism to, you know, kind of handle these? Because I'm sure communities all over the state are contending with the same thing. Even if you're you know, just a, a homeowner, you know, you're trying to, uh, you know, there's example after example of trying to pin down contractors for bids. And a lot of them are just, you know, they're having the same problems. They'll order stuff six months ago and prices change. So, uh -huh. so uh, at this point, I, I would, I would recommend that we, you know, think about, you know, break on this subject and come back and try to think about good solutions and maybe do some research in the meantime, but uh, come back at the, uh, the issue at hand here, which is the um, shortfall. So where are we taking, or where do we want to take the $10,000 from? Uh, I don't know that that's what we're asking, but the uh, shortfall on the, uh, what, the, roof? the original one was 25,000. And I, I don't oh, think yeah. we don't have it. We were talking about taking it out of the budget. Now um, in our discussions okay. this week, we're going to go to, going to put an article in town meeting to increase mm -hmm. it dead and borrow it but the other ones scott did you want to ask for uh this this the the seven thousand for the mission communications and and get that one knocked off if, if that's a if we have it i can i can but i i honestly think that uh we should have that seven thousand in our budget we knew that line I, that me and you were talking about we were talking about earlier today okay. uh I mean, I, I hate to ask for $7,000 out of reserves when I think we have it. I mean, I guess we could look at it further down the road. If we, if we don't, I, I'm not sure. I just, I just think we should, we should be able to come up with that. The, the biggest problem was the, the 25,000 on the roofs that really, you know, uh, every day lost is, you know, probably putting the project off till spring. I don't know if they do it in the winter time, uh, by the time we get everything together and he gets materials, we'll probably talk, be talking about spring, but that, that's out of our control, I guess. Okay. So oh, it sounds, sounds to me like uh, we're going to put that on, on a uh, hold right now. We're not going to uh, do any type of transfers tonight for the, um, for the sewer yeah. or the DPW. Um, if, if anything, what we can do is we're going to be starting to do some more meetings leading up to town meeting, our fall town meeting. So um, I say we table this and talk about it again on our next meeting as a brief uh, thing to talk about and see where, you know, if you have any more information for us. And if Scott comes back and finds he does need it, then just bring it to the next one. We'll put it on the agenda. How's that? All good? Yeah. All right. It's it's good with me unless Linda or Carolyn thinks that they want to have that seven thousand now. I I, I I think it's in the. I think you can handle it in the budget, yeah. Scott. Yeah, yeah I, I do. Too, absolutely so. can handle yeah. it in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So um, there's just um, last a couple other things. Uh, future dates. If you can tell us what we town meeting is coming up, I. I think we're looking at probably November 3rd. Is that right? No, we're sticking with October 27th. They changed their mind. Oh. No, it's October 27th. Yes. Well, when I told Amy, I thought it was going to the 3rd. Oh, oh, oh. But I thought it was since last night. They, both, they met last me. night and they decided to go. So they'll, they'll keep it after all, Amy. So I'm sorry if I misled you. I thought No worries. Was. October 27th? Yes. That's Thursday? Yes. And are we going to do it in the same the school? Yep. With open house. With, with open the, house. With so if the we open need a house. quorum, we got a quorum. <laughs> We're going to steal parents. Okay. All right. So uh, what do we have for dates? What do you need to when are, expect to start to talk about the warrant? When will you get that out to us? I mean, because I want to, I don't, I want to be able to talk about it or see it, or at least a draft ahead of time. Let me go grab my calendar for that. That I Sounds good. Okay, well, she's doing that. The next thing is because coming up is meetings gonna be coming up, such as um, uh, CPA meetings, capital meetings, 
things like that. And we have a new crew. So I wanted to talk about that too, after you're done looking at your dates. Go ahead. Your dates? Who's that? Okay. So um, yeah, I'm looking at the original, you know, calendar for a special town meeting. So we're, we're behind about a week and a half. Um, we just got back uh, the capital requests last week. So we're compiling those and getting them ready to set up to meet with capital, uh, capital planning committee. Probably starting next week, we think we're going to have to meet three times with budget requests uh, for capital. And so I, as I backtrack from the 27th, the public forums on the 21st, I'd like to have the warrant to legal uh, by October 5th. So I think you're going to need, you're going to need us to, you know, uh, capital planning committee to meet in the next couple weeks, um, to have those, those capital projects ready for you. Okay. So I think as long, yeah, as long as I can, um, mm, let me think. Who's your capital? Yeah, we're, we're about a week behind. Finance committee. Amy, Did you ask me that? What's that? I, 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 who, who from finance committee is on capital? Well, oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Okay. Right now it's just me on everything. So I did, we were going to talk about that. As soon okay. as we're, um, anyways, so on October, so I just want to set the next finance committee meeting. Then, and, and, and I, and I figured we should have more than one because I don't think that we should have time to discuss it before. I don't want to vote the night before. I want to have be able to discuss it, look at it. If there's questions, come back to it. Um, so the next, uh, today is, we're on the 8th. Um, and I don't know what days are good for people. I just picked Thursday because I know someone sent me Monday, I think Andy said Mondays and Fridays were out for him. Um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays sometimes are, um, what is it? Planning board has Tuesdays and Wednesdays is select board. Yeah. Thursdays are good. Is it usually generally open? Yeah. So are we looking next week or the 22nd? Well, I won't have any budgets for you. I won't have any. Okay. Because I, I want capital to prioritize. Why don't we shoot for the 22nd? How's that? Yeah, that, that okay. works. Is 5.30 a good time for you, the finance? Andy, are you yeah. around? Yeah, I'll have to uh, double check, but right now it looks good. Okay, and, I am uh, not. Yeah, 5 5.30 is like my earliest time, unfortunately. I know folks working in town hall want to get out and... Uh, but uh, that's about as early as I can make it. Why do I have that? And we can oh, we can do these by Zoom if needed. Still. Yes. Going yes. Forward? Okay, that makes it. And easy. I know a couple of your members uh, do prefer that, don't they, Amy? Yeah. And I know Paul does. I, I don't know about Dylan. I think. He, he said he, he just couldn't make it tonight. Just something came up. But he didn't say Thursdays were bad, so I'm hoping that that will work for him. Okay. So we're going to try for 530 again? Yeah, I'm with yeah, I'm with Andy. I just couldn't do it any earlier than that. So 530 is okay with me for um, Zoom on uh, the 22nd. Will you have a? Will you be able to give us at least a draft of the warrant so we can have an idea of what we're looking at? I'm I'm just looking at. Uh, yes, I just I I I I will know more when Paul and I are playing phone tag, Bukretsky. I will know more once I talk to him and he has put his. He, we can, he can get some make meetings together. Uh, but I certainly can have, 
I will have wordings of articles there. That's fine. And, and we'll have numbers for uh, prior year expenses and adjusting some of the budgets. So I'll at least have that for the 22nd. Just an idea. Goal, yeah. Great. All right. And so how about, uh, so the, so coming up is um, CPA and that I think will be on the 12th. Now, right now I am currently on the CPA, but um, uh, Andy Kopecki has the experience and has been on CPA for a long time. Um, and I believe I would like to see if he would continue on CP if he will do CPA. Um, I, I know that uh, last time I talked to Dylan and, and Paul, they were not interested, so. Yeah, sure. I, I've uh, having been on CPA before for um, uh, for Parker Rec. Um, yeah, I uh, I'm sure the list of projects has been renewed in the past couple of years, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the process there. So uh, I can I can be on there. I, although I think if they're meeting the beginning of next week, um, I can't make it until the middle of next week. They have two meetings scheduled, one for the 12th and one for the 26th, and they're both at 7. 12th uh, is Monday, but so I can make the 26th. They're, they're both Mondays. Yeah. So I what can, I could I can do, it. he can't make the 12th, so I could. I don't have a problem because I'm, I'm familiar enough with it. I can get, and I've been getting the emails. I can get it get it to Andy, um, so that way if he has any questions, he because they don't vote until the next meeting. So this one will just be um, receiving the requests. So I can get them all to him and um, and then he can do all the voting on the 26th. There, uh, but they're also trying to arrange for the 12th, just so you know what's uh, up with CPA is Mary, uh, I guess you have a very large request, 1.7 million from the school for the fields. And uh, she, I guess she's revived this notion again that may, about uh, the uh, concept of borrowing. And so uh, I, we've already talked with David Eisenthal about whether he would come again and make that presentation about how borrowing works with CPA. Um, because they have, what, 2.2, 2.3 million uh, uncommitted funds on CPA. And that can be leveraged against, uh, you know, borrowing so that the payments come out of the income stream over the next few years. So that's going to be a presentation uh, probably at 8.30 on the 12th. So I think it's, it will be recorded. So I think it would be an, an interesting one oh, to, uh, to, to watch. He, he made that presentation one other time. Were you at that one, Andy? Oh. Yeah, yes, oh, okay. um, I was. Yeah. yeah, Mary says about half the numbers have, uh, half the members have turned over since then. Um, I know there was a general feeling of we don't borrow on CPA, <laughs> but I mean, the, the, you, you don't want to take $1.7 million. I, I mean, if they are going to consider that project, they don't want to take that out of the principal either. So, um, so she thinks that newer members ought to hear that too. Um, and, and then you all, then you make your decisions from there. Well, can I make a motion to uh, make uh, appoint Andy as the finance committee representative to CPA with Amy as the, um, back up. I second. So great. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Great. So um, the next one, we have two more. Now capital's coming up. David's been on capital, but I do want to put just because we did talk before David came, I think it would be fabulous if he does it some more because he know he was on it with me when as select board person. But the other thing is I do want to make note that Paul Benjamin did state when I was asking everyone in the last meeting to um, help out or take on something. Paul said, oh, I will do it in the fall. Um, don't know, I tried to reach out, I didn't. Um, he's got a, a big event going on right now. So um, he said he wanted to, um, is, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to um, not have them here. I kind of feel bad. Um, the other thing is bylaws. Um, 
the bylaw committee. Um, Carolyn, we were supposed to have someone on there from finance, um, but no one, no one stepped up and, and I def and I didn't step up either because I had too many going on. Um, so, um, we don't have anybody on bylaws. I don't know anything about it. I don't know if they've been, um, meeting or when they're meeting or, but I want, I think we need to have representation from finance mm -hmm. on the bylaws. Um, I think it's important, especially because, you know, you're, it, it could affect our finances if, if you're changing our zoning and things like that. Um, I don't they are know. meeting. They are meeting. So they've met, I think they've met twice. So it was really just establishing, getting their charge clarified, and now they're breaking it up into uh, board members have been assigned certain sections of the bylaws to focus on or certain areas. So, but I'm sure they would be fine with having somebody from finance step in. It's not like you've missed a lot of meetings, anybody who's involved. They do meet, they do meet during the day. Might be late afternoon. Tuesdays at 10. Or early morning. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Dan, how, have you met twice, Dan? We only met once since the organizational meeting for about okay. two hours, and then we're meeting again this Tuesday from 10 to 12. 10 to 12, what days? Uh, it's basically one, one day a month. Right now, it's, I think it's going to be Tuesdays at 10. Okay. All right. So I want your thoughts, David. What, you, what do you want? What are you interested in? <laughs> so I'm interested in staying on capital. Unfortunately, okay. the, bylaw, the bylaws, uh, 10 o'clock on a weekday is kind of tough. So Okay. Um, if I need to stand in for somebody occasionally, I'm happy to do it. Um, if, if I'm available, but uh, I don't want to be the guy that's expected to be there. <laughs> uh, um, so I don't know, if, in what days was it on, at 10 o'clock? Did you say, Dan? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesdays at 10. But you said it's once a month? Yeah, it's, it's been once a month. We didn't meet in August. It's a two to three year commitment. What, what, um, I'm just curious it's, if it says, I can't do it if it's uh, my, if it's the second Tuesday of the month, but if it's anything but the second Tuesday of the month, I will do it. Uh, I can bring that up on, on Tuesday at the meeting. Okay. Richard. So yeah, it's something I could do. It's just, that's the only Tuesday, it's the second Tuesday of the month. I have a scheduled meeting at nine o'clock every on that one every month. Um, and um, why don't the other thing is since um, uh, I know Paul's pretty busy, but maybe if he's not here, maybe just for this one, and, and we know of what's happening, maybe. David steps in, then when we readdress it, and maybe he can take it on for the spring um, if Paul really wants to. I think he was really just trying to say, I will take one um, because to give me a break, um, not necessarily um, is it something that he's been on or anything like that. So um, maybe um, for now, um, because that's coming up, I, it, it, that's the problem. It is coming up, and we need to have someone on um, capital and go to capital. Um, Amy, if, if you don't want to do it and Andy doesn't want to do it, I'm happy to, to keep on it until, um, you know, uh, I, I guess next year and then we can figure out something else going forward if we want to. Yeah, I definitely would like to, to, uh, give it up. I just, I, the only thing I was just doing was trying to, uh, be considerate of, of Paul Benjamin. That's all yeah. <laughs> I didn't, uh, um, but so why don't we do that? Do I have a, um, like to, uh, nominate, uh, David to do the, uh, the capital as a representation for the finance committee for this fall. So, so moved. Okay. 
So all in favor? Aye. Aye. So, oh, I can't hear you, David. You're, you're muted. I guess I'll be, I'll second that. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I think it's a unanimous, uh, all three. Yes. Okay. So um, that way you'll be ready for when Carolyn gives that, uh, those three dates or whatever it is, that big project. Yeah. That's going to be a big one going to uh, Capitol. Wait, so you said, oh, no, no, that 1.7, that's going to CPA, not Capitol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, school fields again. No, that's the one you get. That's yours. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've, I've been near and dear to that project uh, on and off. I'm and, and kind of surprised it's coming back, but uh, okay. Um, be, uh, I've got some background there. So. Okay. Okay, I have to, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to have to cut out shortly here. I didn't budget for uh, quite this much time, so... Um, uh, if there's anything else that needs attention, can, uh, can we take care of it now? Or I don't have anything else. Um, so I, I mean, is is that all right? I take on. I'll take on the uh, bylaws then. I nominate Amy to uh, represent finance for the, on the bylaws subcommittee. And I'll second that. All right. Are we all in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Wonderful. So. Um, I guess we're, uh, let's call the meeting to adjourn. It is uh, 6.45.